Welcome back to the Theology of the Buddy podcast, episode 32. Our podcast guest today is a convert to the Catholic faith, mother of four, teacher, mentor to a large group of young teen girls at her parish in Indiana, and now hosts a cooking live stream on twitch.com three times a week. She shares with us a bit of her story and how she came to better understand what it means to build community through her live streaming career. She also shares what she is doing in her own Nova Sordo parish to slowly introduce elements of tradition within the youth ministry program and how that is impacting the faith of the teens there. You're not going to want to miss this. All right, Katie, welcome to the Theology of the Buddy podcast. It's great to have you on. Hello, thank you for having me. I mean, I may or may not have browbeat you into it, but thanks. (laughs) It was already something that I had talked about to, I think, with Julie. Yeah. Maybe with Brooke, too. By the way, Brooke is not here today. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it. Poor, poor child. We got a sick boy at home. Yeah. Yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. So... Uh, so just to kind of introduce Katie, Katie Ruval Kaba, aka Karen Ruval Blah Blah, uh, <laughs> aka Mrs. Ruby, is a uh, up and coming, and uh, I would say she's already in the uh, upper echelon of Twitch streamers. Uh, she's at least Reddit famous. Yeah. So yeah. future partner. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's only if I can uh, if I can manage to bribe my way into yeah. that sphere. I don't know what I have to do, but <laughs> you've been doing a lot. Pretty limited. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we uh, we wanted to bring you on the show uh, to because really we only get to hear a little bit, little piecemeal here and there of your your story. So we kind of want to know a little bit about that. And then yeah. we want to kind of dig in and we have some some big questions about what you do as a Twitch streamer because I don't think I don't think Twitch is really well known in a yeah. lot of circles that aren't focused on gaming or, gaming. or whatnot. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. So would you be willing to kind of share your story about how you came into the faith? Yeah, absolutely. So I was raised um, in a Protestant family. My dad is a, is an interesting dude. Um, he'll tell you that he's Mormon or LDS, but like, I don't think the LDS church would agree with that. He's not, Mm. um, registered with any, uh, ward is what they call it. They like, they don't know him. So the best I can piece together is that like, he knew a guy when he was young who was LDS and he thinks that that guy was a good faith whatever. We never went to the LDS church, so I don't know what that is. But when my parents got divorced, they had it written into their divorce agreement that I could not be baptized till I was over eight in case I wanted to be LDS, um, which is odd, but um, because no one ever taught me about that religion. So there's no way I was ever going to go that way. Um, But it factors into my story. So I bring it up. Um, And my mom kind of just floated between evangelical churches. um, And then eventually she married a guy who was Lutheran. So we started going to a Lutheran church and I was confirmed Lutheran in the eighth grade. Um, Mm. And my mom has always been kind of, um, she would probably push back if I said she was anti-Catholic, but I think she's kind of anti-Catholic. I mean, not so much anymore (laughs) since I am, but um, (laughs) since I converted, she's kind of come around a bit, but um, sort of very, when I was in high school or when I was in college and I started developing an affinity for the Blessed Virgin, my mom find it very, unsettling (laughs) like what's what's up with the fact that you have i have like uh, an eastern icon of mary that i've had in my house since i was in college my mom thought it was really weird oh wow Um, mary worshiper well (laughs) and and i i was so excited when i decided to convert i was like now i can get a blessed virgin mary statue for my yard (laughs) 90 percent of why i converted and then eight percent fish fries (laughs) two percent theology yeah but eventually um Um, So I was, I was super, super um, Protestant, I guess, growing up, but I really loved Jesus. And and I was, I read a lot of the Bible and went to a lot of Bible studies as Protestants tend to do. Um, And then when I moved out here to Indiana from Arizona, I didn't have any friends and I was a million years pregnant. 
and my best friend from Tucson was LDS and she was, she was like, well, I can have some missionaries come to your house if you're lonely and you just want someone to talk to. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. So she sent Mormon missionaries to my house just to keep me company. Um, and they were two young ladies who came to the house and would talk extensively about, about Mormon theology with me. And I obviously disagreed with it, but so we would banter and, but it's a, it's a joke in the chat that if somebody came to my door, like an alligator could come to my door and be like, you want to talk about Jesus? And I would be like, come on in, <laughs> <laughs> let's do this. So, uh, the Mormon missionaries come in and they're, they take that section from Matthew, um, was it 18 or 16, 16, where he's like, you know, you are Peter and on this mm. rock, I will my church, that whole thing. Yeah. At the beginning of that, he says, no one has, no one on earth has revealed it to you has been revealed by my father in heaven and you are Peter and on this rock I build my church. And they say, see, God intended to build his church upon the rock of personal revelation. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's an odd reading of that. Yeah. And like yeah. at this time I'm still Protestant. So I'm like, no, I think pretty much anybody who reads in English recognizes that they're, he's building his church on Peter. And so they asked me, like, well, then why aren't you Catholic? And I said, well, you know, it all went downhill in the 1500s and they got crazy or whatever. And <laughs> as far as I understood things from the Protestant sign. And then I was sitting there and right then I read the very next line where he says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And all of a sudden, like years and years of I've read that how many millions of times and it never meant anything to me. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, this either means that Jesus is lying or doesn't know and neither of those things can be true. I'm gonna need you guys to come back later. <laughs> so um, I, I, I gotta do some research here. And so I uh, spent some time on the internet, uh, spent a lot of time with uh, Bishop Robert Barron and Father Mike Handsome Pants. On the <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to call him that. <laughs> um, but, <clears throat> and like arguments that I had heard a million times that didn't mean anything to me were all of a sudden super relevant and made a lot of sense. And like, why would you confess to a priest? Like, oh, okay, now I get it. And it was very strange. It's just how the Holy Spirit works, right? You just all of a sudden think of something different. So the short version that I tell people when they say, well, why'd you convert to Catholicism? The Mormon missionaries talked me into it. Wow. Hmm. That's cool. That's, That's an awesome. amazing story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you came into the church um, and you were married at that point to, to Luis, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what led, led him into the church? Like, how did that happen? Um, so he was baptized Catholic and as so many, um, parents who get divorced with Catholic children, they just, his parents just never took him. They got divorced and the church wasn't true anymore, I guess. And so they stopped taking him and, uh, he never received any sacraments other than baptism. And so after I got confirmed and our marriage was blessed, cause that's part of coming in through RCIA is having your marriage, um, I don't know the correct word if it's validated or convalidated yeah, convalidate, or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I use the word convalidated at my church and they got all sassy with me. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, whatever, whatever the term is. Yeah. Um, so trad of you. That <laughs> right. <laughs> that, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, I like that happened. And then, um, just like I would start talking to him all the time about it. Like, it would just really make me very happy if you were Catholic. And he's like, well, I'll go with you. I support you that you're Catholic. And, and then he just started asking questions and he would go to mass every single week. And then he would start saying things about like his opinions on things started to shift to be more in line with the church's things. And, you know, is this the Holy Spirit's weird, man? Mm -hmm. And then one day, um, he was like, I think I want to go through RCIA, but he was working nights. So there was oh. no way for him to go to the classes. And our um, RCIA director is this like, she's, she's the kind of person that you would otherwise think like, oh, you're probably not going to be real, like an ally for me. She's very boomer, very Vatican II, very <laughs> all of that. Yeah. She walked up to him after mass, like in February. So, you know, like you come into the church at Easter vigil, she walked up to him in the evening in February and was like, um, hey, uh, I know you couldn't get into RCIA this year, but the right at the uh, cathedral is this weekend. And if you can get there and you can make it to breaking open the word every week after this, we will receive you at Easter this year. And I was wow. like, well, that is a crazy blessing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so mm -hmm. that's how he came in and cool. there you go. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. like how, like at that point, how, like how many kids did you have? When he came into the church, four. Yeah, we four. had four when I came in as well. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. How okay. long were you married at that point? Ten years. Okay. Yeah. 
Nice. Yeah. When, I kept making the joke that he was my first husband, and, <laughs> and then, then we got our marriage blessed, and I was like, and now he's my second husband. <laughs> Father Tom hates that joke. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> How, what, was it difficult for the kids to kind of make that transition, or like, how did that, that go for you? Not really, because our oldest daughter was, she went through our CIA as well. Um, because she was over eight or seven or whatever it is that you have to be. So she is already confirmed, actually. Um, and then our our oldest son audited our CIA with her, but he didn't come into the church because he was too young. But the rest of them, like, they don't remember a time before we went to Catholic church because I started going the second Sunday of Easter the year before I was received. So. Okay, cool. Hey, everybody. We hope you're enjoying this week's podcast with Mrs. Ruby. Make sure you check her out at twitch.tv forward slash Mrs. Ruvi and on her social media at MRSRUVI. She's live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Did you know that the Theology of the Buddy is also on social media? You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the Theology of the Buddy. We'd love for you to give us a follow so that we can connect with you. We are working hard to build our community of buddies. So be a friend and give us a follow on social media. We look forward to seeing you there. All right, back to the podcast. Yeah, so maybe we can, um, yeah, let's let's switch gears here. So, yeah, I wanted to kind of get your your thoughts on uh, on your experience as a Twitch streamer at this point. So, how long how long have you been streaming? About a year and a month. Yeah, yeah. and. What has that experience been like for you? Like what, what started that for you? And then, like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> My husband was watching a, a Twitch stream called Hyped Gaming where they were giving away a lot of things. Um, that stream was just hemorrhaging money. Um, and they, they don't stream anymore because they must have lost a bajillion dollars. Oh, wow. But um, he was watching it and he was like, you know, I think you could do this. I think you have a good personality that you'd be able to engage with people. And I was like, but I don't play any video games. And he's like, just try it. So he had me play Fortnite. Um, and I didn't have a face cam or anything. I was just playing Fortnite and talking to people. And I ended up with like 13 viewers for like a woman playing Fortnite. That's weird. And cause I was just doing stupid things like, don't kill me. I'm a mother of four and like running <laughs> away and being, a, being an idiot. Um, and then I, I was poking around on Twitch after I'd done it a couple of times and realized that there was a food and drink section. So I was like, oh, I can just stream from my phone. So I set my phone up on um, a copy of William Shakespeare's Complete Works because it's real thick. And yeah. I got it, you know, about That's eye it. level. And yeah. I just sat there and, and just cooked. And a couple of people who are still in my stream to this day came in and uh, somebody dropped a, a $300 worth of donations that day and was like, buy yourself a better camera. And I was oh like, goodness. okay. Wow. So I just told my husband, wow. like, I want to be good at this. Like, I want to do a good job and make a nice place where people can just be comfortable and hang out and be, I don't know, happy. <laughs> yeah. so, I was, so I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to do this, yeah. you know? Well, Congratulations. You did it. Yeah. Hi. Seriously. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, it's so incredible watching your stream versus you know any other real big streamer like you go in there's not really a lot of community i mean there is but i mean there's just something different about the community that you've built there and yeah. the people that have come in um one i was talking to julia i mean one of the things that i think really sums up the the people that come into your stream is radical generosity. Um, mm -hmm. I have not seen uh, such giving, caring people. Like, and the weird thing is that, like, you will be like, I want to go on a pilgrimage. And <laughs> they're like, okay, we're not Catholic. Here's $700. Yeah. Like, um, that's, that's scary. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, and like you, it's it's so funny watching you get that money because it terrifies you at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very it's very strange to me. I've actually recently developed this whole theory about it. That's um, uh, my priest likes to make fun of me that I over spiritualize things, and I'm like, come at me, bro. 
but um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll fight you. It's fine. Um, he, uh, I, but like I was talking to Emily when we went to Emily and I went to Chicago. Emily's another uh, person who streams with me. If you're listening, you're like, I don't know who that is. This is my Hi, friend. Emily. Hi, Emily. <laughs> Emily. She comes over and streams with me a lot. And we went to Chicago um, to go see Hamilton together. And on the way home, we were just talking about like how we experienced um, anxiety and depression sometimes. And I was telling her like, you know, I intellectually understand that, that God loves me, but sometimes I have a difficult time understanding like why. And also like, I should probably do something to earn that love. And like, I, I need to, I don't know, you know, just, just you know how people are idiots. Yeah. I'm, I'm a super idiot. And I have recently thought like, I think that God is trying to teach me how he loves through this chat. Like, I don't feel like I deserve any of what they give me, any of it. Like all I do is cook in my kitchen. <laughs> like, yeah. It's absurd. But I don't know. I think, I think the Lord is working through this mostly agnostic and atheist group of people. So, yeah. And, yeah. and it's, it's neat. I, I can't remember who, who it was that said it, but they said, like you were saying, it's, I don't know, it's a, it's a solemnity today. So we're eating meat. And somebody in the chat said, I added a Catholic calendar to my computer so I can follow along, you know, oh, yeah. like, like, That's so where cool. do you see that? And I mean, yeah, I think there's, I don't know, like, it's a, it's a form of evangelization in a way that's, you know, more so just you being authentically you. I mean, of course, there's going to be, you know, a little bit of a filter that you put on literally and figuratively, you know, when you meet yeah. the stream and need to say something privately to your children. Yell at my kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, for a lot of people, I think them seeing an authentic Catholic family, mm -hmm. an authentically Catholic woman living her faith um, and not hiding behind, I don't know, like just who just is honest and real. I think that is the best witness, mm -hmm. you know, to a lot of people. And I think they really yeah. need that. We, we have this unfortunate thing, um, especially especially with Christians, I feel like where the loudest among us tend to be the most awful <laughs> and you're like, Oh, thanks for making us all look great. Yeah. Um, but like, I, I, I never wake up in the morning thinking like, I'm going to get on my Twitch stream and make all of these people Catholic today. Like at the end of the day, I just, I just love them. I care about those people so very, very much. And if you're going to love someone, if you're going to let them be part of your life, in the way that like I let them hang out in my kitchen three nights a week <laughs> and it really is just whatever was going on in my house that day, then I have to show them that part of myself because you know, you can't, you can't, you can't love somebody. You can't care about somebody. You can't want somebody in your life and then hide the most important part of yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you go. How, what has changed for you <laughs> since you started streaming? Oh, a lot of things. Um, the, I wear makeup more often. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, folks. <laughs> it's a, mm, I really look like a, a sea hag on the on the huge. But uh, uh, yeah, my my husband actually this week just now got to go off of a night shift because I've been very very blessed with people who subscribe to the channel and the subscriptions. Um, and the, and the bits, like that's the stuff that you get paid out by Twitch once a month. So I get like a paycheck once a month. Um, and that paycheck has made it so that my husband can work days, which is just such a blessing to my family because, um, I haven't, my oldest son has some behavioral issues and having a father home is, especially as he gets bigger is going to be so necessary because there's as his mom there's only so much i can do before he needs a man to step in and be like okay now we're being men like this is what we're doing yeah. here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so i'm i'm so blessed by that and then also um we, we were homeschooling um but the oldest son needed a bit more um locked doors Yes, let's go with locked doors okay. in his education. Like he just needed to be a little bit more contained than what mm -hmm. I could do. Um, and so he had, I had to put him back in public school last year and it was heartbreaking for me. Not because we have bad schools or anything like that or the teachers don't love him, nothing like that. It was just, 
the way that they have to approach things when they have that many students and that many people to take care of, it felt like prison to me. And it felt like parents were not encouraged to be in that building ever, that they wanted to keep parents out and keep kids in. Um, and I understand right. why it was. It's I don't want to bad talk the education system, but um, because of the Twitch stream, we've been able to put them in our parish school. So that's um, awesome. That's been that's been amazing. That's awesome. Let's let's get a little little trad and a little spicy. So a little spicy. So this is the best part. <laughs> so you said in your Twitch stream that you are meeting with your girls group and going to make chapel veils. Let's talk mm -hmm. about that. How did that chapel go? Veils? Yeah. Oh, I started wearing a chapel veil last Lent. Um, it was my Lenten devotion, but that was an excuse because I wanted to start wearing a chapel veil the minute I became Catholic. But um, our RCIA director um, made this face at me that would have just melted paint <laughs> oh. off oh, uh, when I said it. So when we were on retreat right before I was received into the church, I was like, I can't wait to be received in the church so I can wear a chapel veil. And she was like, why would you? <laughs> just, oh gosh! Just the face she made, like, I, and then, like, I was like, "Oh, I better not do that." Like, it never occurred to me that it would be violently—not, it wasn't violent, but like, it's viscerally so received, right? That people yeah. would look at it and be like, Ugh. Um, "Yeah." I always thought it was beautiful, so it took me two years to get up the courage to do it, mm. and uh, and I, so I started doing it, and then I, ha I was already leading the girls' group at that point, and it took them about three weeks to ask me, like, "What are you doing?" And okay. so I started talking to them about it and like, Hey, this is, you know, this is what this devotion means to me and why I'm doing it. And, um, and they all thought it was great. And one of the girls went out and bought her own set of veils. So there were two of us now. Nice. Um, and I asked them, I was like, Hey, would the, would any of you guys want to veil? Like if you had one, but they were all afraid to ask their parents for a veil. Wow. And so I asked my chat to sponsor it. And nice. Lily's by or Bales by Lily has a starter pack that you can buy. Oh, cool. yep. oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> so um, somebody from my chat paid for them to have starter veils. Um, so weird, my Twitch stream paid yeah. for a tratty thing like that's that. Amazing. But, that's amazing. That's, so that's, cool. that's huge. <laughs> yeah. Then they uh, then then like the Sunday or the the day that they came in, they came over to my house. I made them dinner and we sewed the clips in together because they come with a clip, but they're not sewn in. Yeah. Um, so we sewed all the clips in together and we had dinner together. And then the very next Sunday, it was like the rising of the veils in the <laughs> Porto Parish. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was cool. So, so, so do you, you, you wear your veils at Life Teen Mass? I do. Yeah. And, and <laughs> that's a, that's, that's a pretty pro gamer move. Yeah. <laughs> what color do you wear? I, I have a couple of colors. I prefer um, my blue one that I have. I have a, a blue, a Marian blue veil that I took with me to the Holy Land. So it's been in Jesus's tomb. It's been oh, nice. um, wow. stuffed into the hole that like there's a hole in the rock of Calvary where Jesus's cross was. And I stuffed it down in there for a little <laughs> bit, like just rub it around, <laughs> um, touch it on all the things. So I've, I've, that veil has been everywhere that is in the rosary except for like, you know, the coronation of Mary. Wow. Um, yeah. So that veil is my favorite, even though it's not my like prettiest or most impressive or anything. But I also have a pink one that a girl made for me. She was received into the church this year and she started wow. talking to me about, she would come to daily mass and see me wearing it. And she was like, Hey, I want a veil too. Which totally freaked out the RCIA director. Because uh, <laughs> now there's two of them. Oh, um, <laughs> And uh, it's like, I'm getting them outside of my girls group now. And so, uh, but she started making them and she's going to be the one that comes and teaches us how to make them. That's pretty amazing. cool. That is really cool. We're hearing so, so cool. much about this RCIA director. <laughs> Must be I such a parish council. Uh, yeah, I was wondering yeah. if it's actually Susan from it the parish council. Is. Yeah. It's not. She's a wonderful <laughs> woman. Like she's, you know, you've, you've heard like, um, there is another podcast that I listened to where they talked about, um, people who were hurt by the pre-Vatican II era and that they have wounds from that. And I respect that. Like, I get it. She described it this year as like, 
Vatican II happened. And then all of a sudden we were allowed to love people at church. Like mm. that was how she described that, that change. Mm -hmm. And so that was her, her experience. And yeah. I know she comes from a, like a, an honest place and she has no idea that she wounded me with her face that she made. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like, yeah. I just, I just try to just take, like, take it on the chin. You know, she comes from a, a kind place. Yeah. It yeah. is a lot of people's experience though. I mean, you know, telling them like, oh, okay, if you go even to say uh, Latin mass and like, they get that look on their face that like it's like what's wrong with you mm -hmm. you know but again definitely coming from that place of lack of love or community or you know yeah they yeah. all had bad experiences yeah i mean in canada one of the big problems especially kind of in the area that we are and a little bit more south of us because mm -hmm. just a little bit more south closer to detroit is uh, it's way more French dominated down there. And even right before the council, there were still Jansenists that were there. So, I mean, like I heard, I've heard horror stories of like priests kicking altar boys because yeah. they, they missed pronounce something in Latin, you know, yeah. like during the mass, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, there there are you're totally right there are mm -hmm. those wounds but it's interesting seeing how there's right now that resurgence of young people who are longing for that tradition to come back and they don't have those wounds you know they've got them more so from the susans of, yeah. of the the post vatican council you know um, yeah, it's sort of how, I mean, not to say anybody's being abusive, but the way that like be abuse begets abuse, like people who have been in that really. So it's sort of like the people pre-Vatican II had an abusive dad. And then mm -hmm. they're looking at all of us who were raised with divorced parents and being like, ah, I'd be glad you didn't even have a dad. And we're all like, but we would have liked a dad. Like maybe, maybe just not an abusive one. Yeah. yeah. Like, could yeah. we have the tradition without the kicking of altar boys, please? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. One of those. I'll take it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when you see that, like, a lot more, I mean, even in, you know, the parish community that we're part of, like, there's a Latin mass there every Sunday, and there was an article, well, one of the guys that comes, usually most Sundays, he just wrote a uh, post online about his experience. He started, like, he came to check out the Latin mass about two years ago, and just, like, how it's completely transformed his faith. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's cool too, because again, it's that there's this kind of new generation of more traditionally minded Catholics, like he, this, this guy by the name of Tate Pumphreys, yeah. he's, um, uh, he's a composer. So he, he's actually written new traditional Catholic hymns that we even use at our mass yeah. and they sound like something from, you know, the 1800s. It's beautiful. Yeah, and he's like what, twenty, twenty one? Uh, maybe a little older. 23, yeah. 24? So, but yeah, he's, he's he's a fairly young guy. So, I yeah. mean, it's it's cool to see that that they don't have that baggage. I wanted to ask you in particular. I mean, being that you're a convert, what has been your experience of watching what's happening in the church right now? Like, how is that? How are you doing? with that <laughs> How, ask check on your convert friends we're, we're confused and scared yeah uh, I, <laughs> I had probably my my most interacted with tweet the other day um when the amazon synod um document came out and i was like i as a convert don't know enough to know if i should be horrified right now like i i feel a little scared yes. but also like God is in control. So like, where are we here? Um, and, and I, I'm not, I'm not a seed or anything. So I think everything's going to be okay, but I, it's so hard to know what to do. And we're just, it's just a little, it's a little scary. Um, actually listening to you guys, I think it was you guys uh, on one of your podcasts a couple of weeks ago, you were talking about like 
Oh, shoot. Was it you? I might be thinking of somebody else. But anyway, you guys were talking about like how there's a difference between being an ultramontanist and being like crazy. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about like, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it was you guys. Yeah. Like, like it's okay to question the wisdom of what's happening here without being a seed. And like, there's got to be some middle ground there. But for, for me, like, I kind of am, am a terrible theologian. I don't have great theology. I know that Jesus loves me and that's, that's the big thing. And I love, I like to learn about these things, but I don't, I don't focus on them so hard. So mm -hmm. I, I just have to trust that, you know, I know the Pope's name and I'm praying for him, but I don't want to be involved in the politics of it because yeah. it scares me. Yeah. The politics is scary. It like, scares just, us right? all. Oh. Yeah. And like how many of our yeah. saints were not at all involved? Like how many peasant farm girl saints do we have? Like a gajillion. So yeah. I feel like I'm in good company if I just want to focus on loving Jesus and exuding that love to other people. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, really, I mean, how many even cloistered sisters and mm -hmm. friars are there who have no idea of the real ins and outs of what's going on in the synod? I mean, even we were talking about this about Assisi, um, the Assisi meeting in you know 1986 with John Paul II. I mean, for us, you know, we hear about the Amazon Synod two seconds after it happens in Rome, but I mean, when Assisi happened, I didn't hear about it until 2002. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> it you what you thing? don't really hear a lot of it. Like news didn't travel as fast as it does right now. and then everybody feels like super like it's super necessary to m form an opinion on it immediately like just yeah. maybe let it sit for a minute like the uh, pachamama like <laughs> is it just just maybe don't freak out freak yeah. out a little but it's gonna be okay yeah Ugh. yeah the, Ugh. the church still remains the church right yeah and, right and god is still the king of the church and yeah. Yeah, right, and nothing's control. been proclaimed, you know, ex cathedra. We're good. Everything's fine. Just, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. We're I'm still the dog have in that chair. Yeah, everything's on ones. fire. This yeah. is fine. Everything's this is fine. Fine. <laughs> exactly. Like this is fine. <laughs> I, I, I regularly text my priest and I'm like, when are we moving to the compound? And yeah. he's like, we're not moving to a compound. We're not doing the Benedict option. I was like, maybe though. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> what about the He's Benedict like, option where he smashes the idols? Is that a good option? <laughs> I don't know. I found a I found another priest who's willing to take over my 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 uh, compound, so it's fine. Okay, oh, it's nice. fine. there we go. It just won't be him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we, we know lots of people that would probably yeah. Uh, Join in. Yeah, we, we regularly talk about how lit it's going to be when we're all in jail together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's so likely. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's more likely for us than for you right now. Too. Oh, yeah, you're in Canada. Yeah. It's, it's, Sorry about that. It's kind of rough right now. Like, yeah. yeah. That was a really rough vote because it was yeah. so close. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I we almost escaped. I don't know anything about your politics. Yeah. So I, I don't even know more about your politics. politics than about our own politics. We just got our first black prime minister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, Maybe I shouldn't you? say that on recording. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you hear about the big controversy about blackface? Justin Trudeau, he apparently wore blackface like many years ago, and the photos oh. came out <laughs> multiple times. Not just well, he's once. always dressing up to. There was a thing that went around on Facebook, but like him dressing up from like all kinds of different cultures yeah like and when like... he did the trip to india and <sighs> yeah. he dressed up like so, all like there's a Indian picture of me on on my instagram right now wearing um a lehenga which is an indian dress but mm -hmm. i'm not like trying to be indian or anything but like i went to a, a party that was indian themed yeah. and i think it's beautiful so i ordered one from india and i'm not going to apologize for it because i thought it was beautiful yeah well so they, they actually are quite pretty there's a girl i right are you saying you're not sorry <laughs> sorry not sorry i'm not it was beautiful sorry i couldn't resist that one <laughs> it's, it's totally fine but like i do have this weird because of the twitch thing like one day someone is gonna find that picture and be like can you believe she wore this and i'm gonna have to be like yeah i wore it because it was beautiful are yeah. you out of your mind like i would wear that now yeah if it yeah. wasn't cold 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's it's cold here too. Um but yeah, no, they the thing is there's a big difference there between wearing something that's nice from their culture and then like blackface imitating like them. Which is like know? all of the stuff that he's done is like I mean you could just probably Google search it and like you'll see him when all this yeah. different stuff. The stuff he I'm does an on indigenous the trips. person. I'm this What's, person. Yeah. You know? I don't think it was really racist. It was just goofy. Yeah. You know, it's just like he's always acting like a kid at a party, but he's supposed to be on these serious trips, like meeting with world leaders, and you know, and he is the leader like of a country. He goes yeah. into <laughs> costumes at yes. world yes. leader meetings. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't know this man at all. I'm sure he's a very nice man. Well, I it just wasn't meant to be a costume, but he like <laughs> dressed up as an Indian person. I don't know. Like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, and tie it, could be fine, but you know, when in Rome? Yeah. Question yeah. mark. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It was all a bit silly. Canada was totally ridiculed by it. <laughs> yeah. Even like news across the world yeah. making fun of us for it. Yeah. He doesn't know what he is or what he identifies as. Mm. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. yeah. Oh dear. So yeah. We kind of got in the weeds there, sorry. We really it happens. Not. I shouldn't have mentioned <laughs> Justin Trudeau. <laughs> I literally know nothing about this man. I feel bad commenting. Like, oh, <laughs> Well, I appreciate that because uh, after going to school in the states for a year, yep. everybody from America seemed to have an opinion on Canada. Everybody. Well, that's because you were on a college campus. Yeah. Everybody on a college campus is like, "My opinion's super important." Yeah. And yeah. then you turn thirty, and you're like, "Wait a minute, Nobody my opinion cares is what worthless." I say. <laughs> First of all, eighty percent of what I said two years ago was boneheaded. Yeah. And, like. You know, you now we all have Facebook uh, like memories, and we can look back and see what idiots we were. And you're like, yep. oh, great! It is yep. so painful. It's oh my gosh! Painful. Like, what was I thinking ten years ago? <laughs> yeah, twelve but, years ago. But Katie admitted she when she I gets, delete them. You delete them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, well, like so when ugh, well, I'm going to admit this, and it's you're going to hate me, and I apologize. <laughs> but like ten years ago, I was one of those people who was like, well, I'm personally pro-life, but yeah. you know, I can't vote that way. And I'm like, and now I'm like, why the crap not? Like, yeah. <laughs> of course you can. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, if it's bad, it's bad. And what, you know, like, I wouldn't personally own slaves, but you know, I'm not tell you not to like, right. no, that's yeah. not how that works. If it's bad, it's bad. But like, so I go through like every election, like in November, there's always me saying something stupid about <laughs> it's nonsense and I'm like I'm gonna just just delete that <laughs> I'm so sorry yeah, yeah. Oh. I uh, I have a particular memory from probably 12 years ago sitting in a uh, a bar and grill with a group of Catholics defending why life team masses oh, yeah. were, were the superior form over I the Latin mass that. Yeah, and now, and now I'm a Latin master. Cracking so. peanuts with our foreheads. Yes, that's <laughs> part of the reason why. Yep. Yeah. 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 Like, why did we... I even say that? Why did I think that? Yeah. Back then, our we life were team mass, though, people. you have you would not believe this. So the the priest that we have, the younger priest, um, and and the older priest as well, he's been really interesting. Like letting us bring in these more traditional things that you would think normally like a boomer priest would be not down for yeah. but he we um we now have a knights of the holy temple group at our church uh, wow. which is a high school boys group that's very trad so our life team mass is served by 11 young men in cassocks and supplices oh, or whatever nice. those are called and yeah. with incense like our life team mass is our trad mass mm-hmm. that's wow. so cool yeah our yeah. life team mass was like um, uh, there's veils everywhere. It's scary. Weird. Like I played <laughs> electric hands guitar the at it. Yeah. At one point, oh. Chris Mayer made we, out of rapped. I read the psalm. <laughs> I like, rapped the psalm literally. Music. Oh, it was one of the so girls in my girls bad. group. I made them read all the documents from Vatican II, or the the like the five main ones or whatever. Um, for our you, girls wait, group. wait, wait. We'll backtrack a sec. <laughs> you have a a group of teen girls, and you force them to read the documents of the Second Vatican, Vatican Council. Sure did. Sure did. What? Because <laughs> <laughs> like 
We're like, this is, this is like the girls who are like ready to move beyond life team. They want to learn a little bit more about their faith. So we read all of these. And afterwards, one of the girls, she just graduated high school last year. So she's one of the leader people in the uh, crooked halo or choir for the life team. And she every week pesters the, the, the choir director, like, Hey, um, Vatican II says we are supposed to give pride of place to chance. How do you feel about us doing some chance? We would like to do some chance. Yeah. And I'm like, get it, girl, because that's what that document said. Yeah. Also, chant is so beautiful. Like, yeah. just mm-hmm. so uh-huh. we'll get there. We'll get there with the chant. Yeah. Have, Have you, you been, been to St. an John extraordinary Pantius? form before? I've never been. No. <gasps> Dude. Is there is there one near to you? The closest one is about 25 miles south in the city in Indianapolis. Okay. Okay. At Holy um, Rosary, right? At Holy Rosary. Yep. Yeah. We, we, we were there a couple of yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. cool so, like, I would totally go, but I sort of want someone to go with me so that I don't do things wrong. Mm. And like, tell me when I first started going to Catholic church at all, uh, at any mass, my friend Katie, um, I was super nervous about it because I was told that we would be, um, burst into flames because of the idol worship. So that was weird. Um, but I was like, I don't know, like, what am I allowed to touch the holy water? Am I supposed to kneel? What are, which of these things are for me because I'm not Catholic. Right. And uh, she took me and sat with me in the cry room and talked to me through the whole mass. This is what we're doing right now. And this is why we are going to kneel now if you want to, because the body of Christ is exposed and like explained it all to me. And it was like, that's the best purpose of a cry room I've ever heard of. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. We should yeah. change the name to like explaining this to non-Catholics room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I at, like at Latin mass, like basically anybody that comes in, especially as like a first timer, it's like, okay, treat it kind of like adoration and just don't even follow the book. In fact, don't even pick up the book. Just watch and listen. Mm-hmm. Like stand when the priest stands, kneel when the priest kneels. Does the priest kneel? No. No. <laughs> no. You <kinda laughs> follow what the rest of the congregation's doing. Yeah. Uh, you basically yeah. just genuflect. Right. Yeah. yeah. During the mass. Yeah. 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 But yeah, you it's, just watch. It's it it is a bit of a learning curve. Like yeah. for us, like it I don't know, like it's kind of like unlearning what you've learned mm. um in a big way. I don't, I don't know. Is it much longer, like the, the actual mass? Yeah. Well, it, it depends. Can, it, when usually, priests are a little more... Low masses are, are fairly quick. Yeah. But I mean, even like... like Ours starts at one thirty. We're done by 240, 2.45, 3 o'clock. Oh, okay. So and, now it's and we're, and we're drinking whiskey by 3. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. In the community room. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> in the parking lot. Sun. Or in the parking lot. It's like, it's like after the uh, the announcements, they're like, and join us in the community room for whiskey. And yeah. yeah. There's and literally sometimes a tailgate after the mass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we Catholic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's interesting. Like, so, um, like for us... Like we kind of started in that life teen. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Absolutely. That's where that's where I kind of had a reversion. Me too. Yeah. Like, yeah and then just kind of continued. So what on. you're saying is life teen does have value. It does. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I am I still be where I am and this is it. this this would be probably a really controversial statement, but I'm still convinced that the life teen model oh, yes. works. Absolutely. Uh, in terms of a youth ministry program, it works. Their masses need an overhaul. Their but... masses need to be more like yours. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Or ours had it. just so many abuses and yeah. we didn't yeah. know. At we the had time. no idea. We didn't know better, but. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody like... was making you read the Second Vatican Council documents? <laughs> no. no. No, yeah, no one was reading the germ. The know, germ. Not, germ. The germ. The germ. Yeah. I'm sorry. Come on, man. <laughs> Should I turn in my pronouncing acronyms card? <laughs> uh, Canada has way too many regulations. You have a card for that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, like for for you as like a leader of. The leader of women, young women. Um, <laughs> like, would, what, what would you say 
like would you say that evangelization with young people is harder today than it was say when you were younger um i don't know because i come from two different backgrounds but like when I was at a Protestant church, I had a women, a young women's group, a girls group um, when I was in high school. And it was one of the most meaningful things in my life. So um, it's oddly similar, except there's more theology. But um, I you know, I know I don't think it's any harder. I think it's just there's a little bit more like with the gender stuff that's a little bit more odd um, to try to navigate because they've, most of these kids have grown up. Um, and cause like they're co- like what they're right. Re- they recognize is like the last five years cause they were 10 before that. Um, so, you know, in the last five years, it's all been the, the strange new stuff that we're not used to. And, um, so we have to kind of navigate that minefield and talk about like what it is to be a Christian woman. Um, and I have the benefit that I didn't have as a Protestant of having the book of Judith, um, to go to. And that was the first book that we read together as a, as a girls group was the book of Judith, because like, if you read Esther and Ruth, you will learn how to be beautiful and you learn how to be obedient and you learn how to be faithful, but it's not until Judith where you learn how to be sacrificial and hardcore awesome cutting dudes heads off like <laughs> she fast mouths the the leaders like how dare you put your god to the t- how dare you like so we talked about we called that being judith like it gives a, we have a different example of biblical womanhood that wasn't available to me as a protestant that i think is extremely valuable for girls who think that the church is telling them they have to be this wallflower yeah mm. now maybe jumping off from there so because of that relationship that you had with sacred scripture, is that something that is really pivotal for you in your work with, with youth ministry? Like, do you really kind of um, encourage them to get really comfortable with reading, reading sacred scripture and being yeah, familiar with I do. That? And, and they love that. Actually, we go back and forth between reading a commentary and then reading a book of the Bible. Um, so we, we did, um, right now we're doing 33 days to morning glory, um, Marian consecration, but just nice. before that we did first mm-hmm. Kings. Um, and then we did acts last year. Like, I, I just think it's very important to know your scriptures. Um, mm-hmm. n- not that like, that's all that there is. I'm not solo scripture or anything crazy, but like, don't let somebody talk you out of your faith because you don't know your scriptures well enough to know that you're right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. It's so important to know scripture to, to be able to understand tradition, you know, yes. like there's like, I find that especially when you look at the, the different characters in the church right now that are trying to pr- push different agendas, especially with, you know, things like, um, you know, uh, homosexuality and, and acceptance of those kinds of sins, like, it's always devoid of a real understanding, like a cohesive understanding of, of sacred scripture mm-hmm. and how that, uh, how sacred scripture influence influences our understanding of the tradition that we've held for, for millennia. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's the same kind of situation with, with things like, um, like traditionalism. There is so much, jettisoned at, at the second vatican council for example like like the ember days you know mm-hmm. and you're like the ember days are super sweet and super necessary and they're rooted in sacred scripture they're rooted in jewish you know in judaism um mm-hmm. yeah. and we just said see you later you know mm-hmm. and it's like it, it's yeah you know, like cutting off your nose to spite your face it's like you're losing so much um yeah. I don't know. Like, would you agree with that? Yeah. I think, um, for, for the position that I'm in, in a very novus ordo church, um, or parish rather, it's, a. Uh, if I started like trying to go out for Ember days, um, it doesn't, <laughs> I, I can, I can picture father Tom making faces at me already, Yeah. but like when it was, Ember, what was the last one was in the fall, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that must have been when I did it. I texted all the girls through our girls group and was like, guys, it's Ember Days. This is where it comes from. So maybe you don't want to do all of them, but you maybe just pick a Wednesday. And, and, and our brothers and sisters in Pittsburgh are doing this because of their, of the, you know, the scandal and let's join in with them. And like, um, so I try to, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know as many of those traditions as you guys do because I've only ever been in this one parish. Yeah. And it's a little hurtful that like all of my knowledge of tradition comes from the internet, but then it's not <laughs> present in my parish and that hurts a little, yeah. but I'm getting, I'm trying to like square myself with that. But like just for basic doctrinal things, when we went through Kings, we had a, we have a Protestant girl who comes to our girls group with her friend, with my, one of my girls and and we looked at it and we're like, okay, so why is Bathsheba so big into the fact that her son needs to be the king? Because that makes her the queen because the king's mom is the queen. P.S. Mary's queen of heaven. <laughs> like, <laughs> like are, are you with me here? Like, this is what we're doing. Like the yeah. queen's, the queen is the, the king's mom. Yeah. And then the Protestant girl was like, oh, are you serious? Is that ri-? like, she's like looking through, she's like, that's right. That's what's happening here. I was like, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. That's the I, queen, my friends. I feel like you don't give yourself enough credit though. Yeah. Like so oh, so like for example, there sweet. there was the one time in chat where we had a Protestant minister come in and like they were talking about um Jane. Yeah. And talking about praying for people. And I and I just kinda like slyly said like, you know, oh so you know that must mean, you know, like you asked the saints to pray for you or something. And she's like, no, that doesn't make sense. Like they're done their duty. And then you're like, you're just, you just kind of go, Jane, that doesn't really make sense. Anyway. So you then you go off to cooking and then you're like, <laughs> you don't know, no, hold on. You're like, I'm not coming back to that. And then you just like blow open revelation on her. And then you're like, okay, going back to cooking. Okay. <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want to, I don't, Jane has, Jane, Jane was Catholic growing up. She converted to what um, she's an, an American Baptist now and she's in seminary to be a minister. And I don't ever want to like hurt someone in the, in their faith. If yeah. that's, I mean, I will pray for her. And obviously, would I love it if she turned around and was like, I'm coming back to the church? Yes, I would adore that. But I don't want to come at that in like a, like, that's my whole point of being no. friends with you and like yeah. none of that. No. But I do want to challenge her on those things because I think she was, she was saying that like your duty here on earth is to, um, is to try to get people to heaven. And then once you've died, it's like a reward. And I don't know if I said it in chat, but like, I really don't think of life here on earth as being a testing ground with a heavenly reward. I think of it more as a job interview. Like you're going to, you're going to be asked to do this job in heaven interceding for the people on earth. And if you can't show on earth that you're willing to do that, when you can see them face to face by like, goodness gracious, how can we trust you to do this in heaven? You know? Yeah. 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 That's a very cool know. way to put That's it. That's a really good way to put it. Mm -hmm. I always yeah. tell my girls group, I said, it's, it's like, it's like running a marathon. Like if heaven is a marathon, but you don't know that yet. Right. And like, so you run every day and you're, you get yourself up to that 30 or what is it? 26 miles or whatever it is. Like you're good. You're, you're good at running. You eat well, you've conditioned your life for this. If somebody walks up to you on a blind Thursday and says, Hey, do you want to run this marathon for this eternal glory? You'll be like, heck yes. Um, but if you've lived your life without that training, without perfecting yourself or without trying to become more righteous or whatever. And some are in this case running. If somebody comes up to you on a blind Thursday and says, Hey, would you like eternal glory by running this marathon? You're gonna be like, nah, I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. I'll be over here eating yeah. Cheetos. Yeah. And then you'll never get that eternal thing. You know, so we, we practice charity and we practice hope and we practice all of these things so that when our blind Thursday comes up and we're called on up to the uh, big leagues, we're ready. Yeah. And if you're like half ready, then you just have to spend a lot of time in purgatory running laps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that will be my purgatory. I'm certain yeah, I'm of it. Running laps. <laughs> running laps. <laughs> Diabetic, you will pay for your insulin. <sighs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> awesome. The other running day, I, I had this beach. like 
You know, did you guys hear me complaining on stream about um, Thomas Akimpis? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Gosh, I can't get that you, out of my you head. Need, you need to tell Julie this. Most so. nights I've been working, except oh. now I'm not working. Okay, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I don't. I don't know this story very. So I googled it after the fact and found out that this might just be a legend. So okay, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But um, allegedly, Thomas the Kempis, he wrote this imitation of Christ, like one of the yeah. greatest books on Christianity. Yeah. Saint um, Saint Therese's favorite book. Yes. Yes. He. Um, was dug up because they wanted to declare him a saint and they dig him up and um, find that he has bits of wood under his fingernails and claw marks on the inside of his coffin. So mm -hmm. it appears that he's been buried alive. And so he uh, allegedly, I don't see any documentation from the Vatican to support this, but allegedly his, his case was paused. Like we're not doing this anymore because he may have despaired. Um, and, I've and so heard you this can't story before. Wow. And I, 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 I am now sitting here thinking about St. Thomas Akimpis stuck in this tiny little coffin. Like, what do you even freaking do? Like, you just, just panic and like break your own heart with fear. Like, I just, I can't picture it. So I'm very terrified that my purgatory is going to be getting rid of my fear of being very alive. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I once said that to a Jehovah's Witness who came to my door when I was in college. She was like, it was on Thanksgiving too. Like, what are you doing in my house on Thanksgiving? Yeah. Anyway, she, uh, she was, she answered the door and she said, what would you say if I told you you were going to live forever? And I was like, I'd be way more afraid of being buried alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm yeah. think about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, wow. That's creepy. Yeah. That's that is, creepy. Yeah. Yeah. We were doing, so I'm worried we were, that that's purgatory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were talking about Catholic ghost stories a, a few weeks ago and that's that's more scary. You win. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, I don't uh, even that's not even my story. They, <laughs> I, I stole it from another podcast. They were talking about it this week and I was like, "What?" Oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah. I heard that story in the context of the um like talking about how the the process has changed for canonizations. Oh. Like how it used to be so hardcore and so strict. Yeah. That even something like that would prevent someone from being canonized. Mm -hmm. And it's really become so lax now that there's not even a devil's advocate anymore and stuff yeah. like that, right? Yeah. yeah. So easy. Paul Matt. the Six could do it. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Spicy. Spicy. <laughs> wow. I'm going to not touch that. Yeah. Well, no. it's funny. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna start a fight with you guys because of something Amazing. that you guys. So I was gonna, I was cool. gonna spicy you. I was okay. gonna spicy you. Ready? Let's do this. Okay. So I saw. I told you guys earlier before we started the podcast that I went and saw Harriet with my daughter. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Which is about Harriet Tubman. If you don't know who that is, um, she's a, a conductor from the Underground Railroad before the Civil War. She mm -hmm. would take slaves from the South to the North, um, and she did this by herself, like just one woman. She would go down there, grab a couple, go back up go back down, like just back and forth and all by herself saved 70, I think it was 70 people total. Wow. Um, and she was prone to these like fits. She got hit in the head when she was young and then she would black out and lay down and like she would hear God's voice and she would say that she could see things that were going to happen before they happened. And God like told her the ways to get around the bad guys that were waiting at the bridge and stuff like this. And I Googled this a little bit and like, yeah, it's, that's pretty much what she said happened. Right. <clears throat> so as soon as this is, this movie is over, my daughter looks at me and goes, mommy, Harry Tubman's a saint. Right. And I was like, Oh, um, okay. So she's not Catholic yeah. because she was a slave on a Protestant person's thing that like, all she would have known would have been whatever he made her made available to her. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know you guys are like not fans of the whole, hope that everyone might be saved oh here we go <laughs> <laughs> but but i'm sitting here thinking like clearly she's got a very joan of arc like god speaking to her she did this miraculous thing she's a faithful woman like you would like read some of the things that she wrote she's so beautifully faithful mm -hmm. i would have a very hard time making the argument that although she's not infallibly declared to be a saint i have so much hope for that woman I think we kind of talked about that. Yeah, yeah, the hope for all people being saved applied to individuals is definitely, I don't yeah. disagree with that. Yeah, no. for sure. No, I only just, disagree just... when it's taken to, like you asked Bishop Barron, 
is it possible that hell is empty? He says, yes. Yeah. That's not possible. That's wrong. Yeah. We hey. know <laughs> that's not true. But our, And our Lord makes yeah. that clear in sacred scripture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why does the and path the of many go there? At Fatima. Yeah. yeah. And the children at Fatima. You have to throw that out too. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, and Saint Teresa I, saw souls. Saint Teresa of Jesus saw souls falling into hell like snowflakes. Yeah, you know, like. But yeah, it's yeah. a good point looking at like uh, someone who lived a very virtuous life and maybe never encountered the Catholic Church. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's how would I you? I still think it's that, possible yeah. for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fine, then it's not that spicy. Yeah. Then I, I agree with you. That's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Start a different fight. Yeah. We're sorry for being right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I even think there might be a reason to hope that Infamous might be saved. Aww. So, I, I have so much hope for it. Have I ever told... So Infamous, he'll never listen to this podcast. Yeah. Infamous, I love you. Um, <laughs> he's a super weirdo in my chat, but I love him with all of my heart. And his name when he first started listening or first started watching the channel was Nanwa Infamous. Um, and that had been his name since he was like 11 or some nonsense. He'd used it online forever. And he changed his name to the Ifamous you now know and love because Millie spelled his name wrong on his permaboard. And he wanted to be part, like he identifies as primarily part of our community. Yeah. So his name changed. And that gives me so much like reassurance from him. and he's always like i'm never going to become a catholic woman. i'm sure you're not infamous it's fine yeah but like <laughs> i yeah. i know your heart and i know who you are and i i don't care you're 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 gonna get there eventually you're gonna spend a lot of time in purgatory but <laughs> it's fine yeah he's gonna he's become catholic one millisecond before death yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> toss some quick apostolic yeah. pardon on that man and yeah. he's <laughs> He has the right heart. Like he has the the material there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm. That's that's the interesting thing too, right? About about that community that you've started is like there's so many people that are all over the spectrum, yet they're totally open to hearing about it. Yeah. You know? It's it's, it's weird, weird, right? Yeah. But but at the same time I think you have earned their trust. You know, you've you've done you've done the work. You've put you've put yourself out there. You've been committed enough to show up three times a week for hours on end, cooking whatever they send you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh. uh, including haggis. I got uh, to put the kibosh on that man. Oh my gosh, it's getting out of control. It's it's been amazing though. Like it's yeah. it's so funny with the. Yeah, just seeing how open they are and yet and and they're willing to understand and respect generally respect your boundaries too. When you're like, nah uh, PG stream, cut it off cut you know, cut it out. They're like, Okay, cool. Yeah, my B yeah. and just yeah. move on. And and I feel bad because my PG PGometer is like a hundred percent in my own head. Yeah. So like <laughs> I'll make jokes that I'm a drug addict. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, no, that's too far. I'm like, I don't know why it's okay for me to make heroin jokes and not you. But... Yeah. yeah. Or like Probably when because I... I know I'm not on heroin and I don't know. Yeah. Or like when I come in and I make an NFP joke and it's like you and Emily get it. Nobody else gets it. <laughs> well, see, I always worry that like I don't want it to become a Catholic stream by any yeah. means. Like, yeah. That, that sounds terrible, I'm sure, but like, I don't want it to be like an evangelization stream. Like, I'll talk about Catholic. I've had a priest on repeatedly to answer their questions. Father yeah. Harrison from Clerically Speaking was on. My own priest came on. Um, so and it was cool. great, but like, I don't, I don't want people to feel like they have to be religious to watch the stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want people to just know that they're loved and cared about because like, that's, that's the main thing, you know? Like, how do you know that? that Jesus loves you, it's probably because your parents taught you that and you believe them because they love you. And why would they lie yeah. to you? You know, mm. I, okay. I think also too, part of the phenomenon of your stream is, is the fact that I think people in today's culture need good examples of motherhood. And I think you mm -hmm. provide that in oh. a big way. 
Yeah. We hear a lot about like missing fathers, but I do think there is a lot of mother hunger out there in the world. My girls group, I see it a lot. Like whenever they come over and they like to cook when the, the, the day that we sewed the clips into the veils and made dinner together is their favorite meeting we ever had. Like they, they played with my kids and they were in my kitchen. And I think that that tells, speaks so much to this incredible role that God had for women that we some not I'm not I don't want to like generalize or but there are women out there who think like I need to be a priest in order to have this amazing role for God. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't discount your role. Don't discount what you have because all of that bread that was consecrated in those early churches were baked by Mary's and Martha's. Like yeah. those women were essential to the life of the church. Don't don't discard that so easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a unique a identity. Yeah. There's yeah. a unique identity you guys offer. Uh, you girls offer, I should say, um, that, Ladies. that, that men just can't give. They just can't. Mm-hmm. Priests can't well, give and it. Yeah. I like to remind father, my, my, my priest friend uh, that Emily and I are always ragging on. Um, cause we love him, but we, we <laughs> rag on him. um, but like God made us man and woman. That means you guys don't have all of God's attributes and we have some of them. And like some of our attributes that you guys are missing, like our stereotypical tendency toward jealousy, that, that, that mirrors our jealous God, you know, like there are things that we have that we have to offer and that are just totally different from you. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is a maternal side to God, you know, Mm -hmm. not that he is mother, um, (laughs) mother and father. (laughs) No, right. He is, you know, he is, he is God, the father in his identity, but there is that, (laughs) there is that maternal. (laughs) There's a Pachamama joke in there somewhere. (laughs) That's totally what we were getting at. Is it Pachamama? Are we saying it wrong? No, it's a cha. It's a yeah, it has patch. to be, right? Because it's in Spanish. It's an ah, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've patch actually seen it debated, like, people ah. looked it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a cha. Cha. <laughs> yeah. This this is high quality podcasting right now. <laughs> yep. Hi, yeah. hi, everybody that just turned off the podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Linguistics with Theology of the Buddy. <laughs> yeah. 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 How to pronounce pagan idol names. <laughs> more like. <laughs> oh, no. Or, uh, I don't know how many more pagan sure, idols. I'm like, sure my brain's going dumb. Molech. So then we're oh. saying that we're going to have to add into every podcast. Yeah. How to pronounce your newest Mac- pagan How to idol. pronounce macaroon. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh for days. It was so funny. So funny. <laughs> so oh, poor mortal rouge. We have a French dude in our chat who's like, that's it. No. I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> 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 awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, I wanted to maybe end our chat today um, by asking your opinion on what do you think the church this is a big question what do you think that we as you know people in the church could learn from twitch community and um yeah okay um so yeah okay so i think that um i have two different axes to grind oh crap which one to grind you okay grind, both grind them. them both grind all the axes <laughs> It's just a nub. Okay. So I have two different, two different lines of thinking. Like the number one is that to make a person feel loved or to make a person feel welcomed in your church. I think we do too much of trying to make us like them instead of letting them be like us. So like the thing that I do whenever somebody subscribes to my channel is to dance around like an idiot and say, one of us, one of us, one of us. Right. But like, Everybody in the chat, I didn't, I didn't start swearing because people came into my chat swearing. I didn't start making potty jokes because I, well, I did a little bit, but like, you know, I'm not like, I'm not like terrible. I, I don't, I, I'm not like vulgar because other people are vulgar because that's the atmosphere on Twitch. This was my house that you were coming into. 
And I want you to be part of my family. So I want you in my traditions and in my thing. I want to invite you into those things. I don't want to exclude them from you and make them all mine and you can't be part of them, but I'm not going to change them because that's not me inviting you to be part of my family, right? Like, how do you know when you get married that you're actually accepted into your husband's family? It's when your mother-in-law gives you something that came from his family, right? Not when she knitted a new sweater or whatever. It's when she gave you the, the thing that was part of their family. So like giving, giving new people the traditions and welcoming them in and inviting them to be part of the traditions is what I think we've messed up the most. Like we, um, at my church, we had this discussion, poor Marianne, the RCIA director, (laughs) gone to her and said like, Hey, Marianne, it would be really neat if during RCIA, we could teach people how to pray the rosary. And she's like, well, we give you a pamphlet. Like it's in the bag of stuff we give you when you're confirmed. Like it's a, you know, the little card stock thing that they give you. And you're like, yeah, but that doesn't have the Fatima prayer on it. And like our, they add the memorari at the end, like all of these things that you don't know. And then when you pray in a group, one person talks and then you wait and that, you know, you're like, you know how to pray a rosary, right? Yeah. It's weird if no one teaches you how. So then you start to feel like I just was received into this church, but I'm not part of them. Like, I don't know about this stuff. And so I feel like we need to do a better job of involving everybody in our, in our traditions, instead of trying to whitewash our traditions to make them fit everybody, Mm -hmm. because that's when people feel loved and accepted into your community. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's what I think that we could learn from Twitch because Twitch is very much like that. Like the streamer sets the tone for the, for the community. Yeah. Um, But then the other thing that I would like to encourage is that I feel like a lot of parishes nowadays are very big into the new evangelization and they, um, um, my, which is funny, my parish brought my friend, John Blevins, who is a Catholic Twitch streamer as well to come speak at the parish about Twitch streaming. And I was like, you guys know I'm here, right? (laughs) You paid him. I would have done this for free, (laughs) whatever. It's fine. Um, but like they want, they want that. They think that's so cool and so neat and they're not wrong, but when you're out there in an atmosphere that's sometimes hostile to you, like I once had a a Reddit person say, I think everybody has the right to know she's a pro-life Catholic before they decide to hit that follow button. And that that gutted me for days. I was like, imagine saying that about any other demographic. If they were to say, I think you have the right to know that she's a gay black woman before you press that follow button. I'm like, that's, that would not be okay. And reasonably so. Right. And it's not okay the other way. So like, it's, it's a little hostile and, and it's a little hard to be out there in that way and be open about your faith in front of people that you know could make fun of you. So if you are a parish that wants your people to engage in this kind of evangelization and be out there among the people, you have to make your parish a place where they can rest. Because if I come back to my parish and I want to be so freaking Catholic, it hurts and wear a veil and kneel to receive the Eucharist. I cannot come to my parish and get stink eye from Susan Mm. and then go out and feel like, like I can't be too Catholic here and too Catholic here. I need you to let me have that space to breathe. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. That really sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out of axes. <laughs> it's just a nub now. So. Yeah, it's just a nub. It's a stick at this point. That was a good axe. A sharp a stick. Good axe. It's like a pencil. Yeah. It's, that's yeah. that's a Boniface axe if I've ever heard one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I see what awesome. you did there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So. Well, Katie, thank you very much for joining us today. This has been a, a really, really yeah. fun conversation. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you you do a fantastic work. So, um, yeah, can you let us know where people can find you? Yeah, um, I stream at twitch.tv slash Mrs. Ruby. It's M-R-S-R-U-V as in Victor I. And then I'm also on Instagram and Twitter as Mrs. Ruby. So you can find me there. Awesome. Cool. Well, from all of us here at Theology of the Money, stay, stay tratty. <laughs> We're so glad you chose to listen to our podcast today. Did anything from today's podcast inspire you or perhaps challenge you? Did it give you ideas of how you can better use your personal gifts and talents to love others? Message us on Facebook or DM on Instagram at Theology of the Buddy, find us on Twitter at Trad Friends, or email us at theologyofthebuddy at gmail.com. You can also send us a voicemail via Facebook Messenger. If you like what you heard today, 
please consider subscribing to us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you listen to great podcasts. Would you also please consider rating and reviewing us on iTunes? We'd greatly appreciate it, as it helps us to get noticed within the larger podcast community. Next week, the crew chats about the importance of building imagination and the morality of Dungeons & Dragons. Make sure you're subscribed so you'll know when it comes out. We'll save you a seat at the table. New episodes are released every Wednesday. So until then, stay trotty.